Some animals can roam across their territories for millions of years. But every now and again, an animal will completely disappear from an ecosystem. This disappearance can be caused by a wide range of factors, such as climate change, natural disasters, invasive species and overhunting. In recent times, these factors are almost always human-related, and these disappearances can have a massive negative impact on the ecosystem. When an animal is forced out of an ecosystem, it is a very tragic event. But luckily, in some cases, we are able to undo the damage that we've caused. Species reintroduction is the deliberate release of a species into the wild from captivity or areas where the organism is capable of survival. Unfortunately, not all reintroductions are successful, but I will be going through some of the success stories today. The first continent we will be taking a look at is Africa, and the animal that we will be focusing on is the South African cheetah. The South African cheetah, also known as the Southeast African cheetah, is a cheetah subspecies native to East and Southern Africa. They are mostly found in lowland areas and deserts, and a large number of them are found in the Kalahari Desert and the Okavango Delta. This subspecies is found in quite a few different African countries, but the majority of them are found in Namibia, Botswana and South Africa. In these countries, this cheetah mostly feeds on antelopes and other small fast creatures. But cheetahs have quite an obvious weakness. Famously, cheetahs are built for speed, and they are some of the fastest land animals on this planet. This speed allows them to catch very fast, agile prey, but it also means that they are very lightweight cats. This means that their kills are often stolen from them, and they can be bullied in areas with lots of other predators. Cheetahs also suffer due to human-related factors, as they're often killed by farmers when they go after livestock. These factors have led to the South African cheetah disappearing from certain countries, and two of these countries are Eswatini and Malawi. These two countries are both small and landlocked, and the South African cheetah disappeared from both of them. Thanks to conservation efforts, these cheetahs now roam across their former ranges, as they were successfully reintroduced into Eswatini in 1997, and they were reintroduced into Malawi in 2017. Thankfully, their population in these areas has started to grow, and this beautiful big cat is making a comeback. The next continent we will be taking a look at is Asia, and the animal we will be focusing on is Per David's deer. This species is native to the river valleys of China, and in these areas it mostly grazes on grasses and aquatic plants. This species is known for being a very strange looking deer, as it has a horse-shaped head, hooves like a cow, and a tail like a donkey. This deer was once abundant in China's Yangtze River Basin, but it almost completely disappeared by the late 19th century. This animal's numbers were completely decimated by floods and hunting, and at one point in time they were completely extinct in the wild. Luckily some of these deer were still alive and healthy in captivity, but these deer were not in China. Over in England, the 11th Duke of Bedford had built up a large herd of these animals on his estate, and these deer would stay here until the 1980s. This was when the 14th Duke of Bedford donated several dozen of these deer to the Chinese government, and they were eventually reintroduced into the wild. As of 2020, the wild population is thought to be around 2,825, with many more living in nature reserves across China. This is definitely one of the most successful reintroductions in Asia, and it's great to see these strange deer back in the wild once again. The next continent we will be taking a look at is Europe, and the animal that we will be focusing on is the alpine ibex. The European ibex is a species of wild goat, and it's native to the mountains of the European Alps. This species, like many other goats, is sexually dimorphic, with the males being much larger and having larger horns than the females. They tend to be found in areas with steep, rough terrain, and they tend to live near the snow line. Like many other goats, they are incredible climbers, and they are able to climb places where almost no other animals can climb. The alpine ibex has a few predators in the form of wolves, lynxes, bears and foxes, but humans were the main reason behind their decline. Historically, this species had a much larger range, but during the 16th century, their population started to decline. This is when firearms started becoming more and more common, and this species was overexploited and poached. They had disappeared from Switzerland and Germany in the 18th century, 
and they disappeared from Austria in the 19th century. Thanks to stricter protections and reintroductions, the alpine ibex's numbers are much healthier today, and they're even listed as least concern. Some of the first reintroductions started all the way back in 1911, and this just goes to show how effective reintroductions can be. The next continent we will be taking a look at is North America, but we won't be looking at any of the mainland states. Instead, we will be taking a look at Hawaii, and we will be focusing on a very beautiful bird known as the Hawaiian Goose. Now I know I am slightly cheating for this inclusion, because Hawaii is politically part of North America, but geographically it is not part of any continent. For the sake of this video, I am including it as part of North America, because the Hawaiian Goose's story is a very interesting one. This bird is endemic to the Hawaiian Islands, and it is the state bird of the state of Hawaii. Some of you may notice that it looks very similar to the Canada Goose, and it is thought to have evolved from the Canada Goose. It's thought that the Canada Goose may have arrived on the Hawaiian Islands around 500,000 years ago, and today the Hawaiian Goose is a descendant of these geese. These birds are mostly found along the grasslands, coastal dunes and lava plains of Hawaii, and in these areas they mostly feed on plant matter. The Hawaiian goose was once relatively common in Hawaii, with an estimated population of around 25,000. This was until James Cook arrived in 1778 and introduced a whole host of invasive predators. Mongooses and feral cats wiped out large populations, and by 1952 there are only around 30 birds left. Thankfully, there were a few of these birds in captivity around the world, and one of the places where they were kept is Slimbridge. Slimbridge is a wetland wildlife reserve in England, and it was key in helping these birds bounce back. In Slimbridge, under the direction of Peter Scott, many of these geese were successfully bred, and then they were reintroduced into Hawaii. Today there are almost 4,000 birds in the wild, and this makes the Hawaiian goose the rarest goose in the world. If you live in England, there are still some of these geese at Slimbridge, and thankfully there are still some in the wild as well. The next continent we will be taking a look at is Oceania, and the animal that we will be focusing on is the Greater Bilby. The Greater Bilby is a long-eared rabbit-like mammal native to Australia, and it's a nocturnal creature mostly feeding on insects, fruit, and fungi. They are a medium-sized marsupial with a length of up to 55 centimetres long. This species was once abundant across the arid areas of Australia, but quite a few factors led to its decline. Habitat loss and disease played a part, but they also had to deal with invasive predators such as foxes. Thanks to invasive species control and conservation efforts, there have been a few successful bilby reintroductions, and some of these have been in the arid recovery reserve. Even though this is a success story, they're still not back to their previous numbers, as they were once found across 70% of Australia, but they're now only found across 10%. Hopefully their numbers will carry on growing, and hopefully there will be more of these rabbit-like creatures in the wild in the future. The final continent we will be taking a look at is South America, and the species we will be focusing on is the Andean condor. This species is the only member in its genus, and it's found in the Andes Mountains in western South America. It's the largest flying bird in the world by combined measurement of weight and wingspan, as it has a maximum wingspan of around 3.3 meters and a maximum weight of around 15 kilograms. It's generally considered to be the largest bird of prey in the world, but this size doesn't keep it safe from humans. Andean condors have been affected by habitat loss, poisoning, and hunting. Sometimes these birds are directly poisoned, or sometimes they get poisoned by eating the flesh of poisoned animals. As they have very low reproductive rates, they are extremely vulnerable to human persecution, and this is why their numbers have been declining over the years. Some of the areas hit hardest were Venezuela and Colombia, but in one of these areas they've started to make a comeback. There are ongoing Andean condor reintroductions in Colombia, and hopefully with the help of captive breeding they will be able to make a comeback. Some of you may have noticed that I haven't included Antarctica, and this is because there hasn't really been any reintroductions in Antarctica. Most of the wildlife here is migratory, and there hasn't really been a reason to reintroduce any species here. 
But if there are any animals you think I should have included in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.